wow, this project is finally complete. Mortal Kombat 2 in 2020. Thank you so much for watching. I wish I could begin to express just how much work that went into this project. And if you're watching this behind the scenes video, you'll start to see a little bit of just how much went into making this come to life. If you're also watching this video, you'll know that I was producing this as well as the short film itself and producing them both at the same time. Two videos published in the same day. Yes, a lot of work. And you can see I've got my Mortal Kombat game, my Mortal Kombat shirt, I got my character selection screen with Katana selected. She was my favorite character. Katana. If you've come here, you've either decided you liked the video so much you wanted to see how it was made, well done. or you hated the video so much you wanted to see how something so awful could come to be. Oh. Either way, thank you for your time and hopefully your appreciation on this project. If you haven't seen the video itself yet, please watch that before jumping into this behind the scenes video. So how did this project even come to be? Uh, initially, I had this idea where Sub-Zero and Scorpion were watching the news together on the couch and they see uh, an announcement about a mask mandate and there's some sort of celebration there. So I text my brother Sean who plays Noob and Reptile and helped me produce this project and I just sent him the idea and asked him um, for a little bit help uh, expanding upon it and helping it grow into something that could potentially be a video. So then he sent me this meme he stumbled upon and from there the idea grew. Sean mentioned it could be some sort of conference call with none of the masked players answering the call. I foolishly commented to him this could be a relatively simple concept and I said then it could be super easy to shoot as well because I just thought about how the camera had to sit on a tripod to mimic a webcam, no movement or real need for sets or crazy production design. Easy, right? How about the fact that we have to film nine characters and eight of them have to be on screen at the exact same time? <laughs> this initial idea happened back in July of 2020 when we were in production for my short, Not From Minnesota. On August 11th, I sent Sean the first draft of the script, and it was really more of uh, just flushing out the idea, a wireframe, a short version of how I envisioned that the script could go. Most importantly, the script had no ending. I, I had no idea how to end it at this point. Then, after some feedback from Sean on a possible ending involving Johnny Cage showing up clearly sick and symptomatic, he thought we could end the video with some sort of fail music. Then, building on his ideas, collaboration really works, it struck me. How does every single Mortal Kombat match end? With an opportunity for a fatality. If you nail your button combo after the finish, finish him or finisher comes up, you get a fatality. I had the idea that Johnny coughed until his head exploded, and with that our idea was fully fleshed out. And two weeks later I finished the script, finished the script, and I sent it over to Sean and we were off and running. And I say finished because the script is oftentimes evolving as you go through production, and that was certainly the case with this project as well. Then it was time to figure out how to execute this concept, which is really where my strength lies. Producing, problem solving, let's go. First up, who's gonna play these characters? Sean and I can obviously be in the mix and even play all the masked ninjas based on the fact that the early Mortal Kombat games took the same ninja sprites and did simple color swaps with them. So even one of us could have played all the ninjas, but I wanted to add some variety into the mix and not have all three of our main characters played by the same person. So I enlisted Sean and then my friend Mitch, both seen from my Not From Minnesota video, and myself to play these roles of ninjas. So now on to the hard part, finding a katana, Jade, and Melina. Being an experienced producer here in the Twin Cities, I, I have lots of connections to talent, but given this is a personal project, a YouTube video, I needed something more in the realm of volunteer talent. Help me, I'm poor. I reached out to Deborah Jen, a wonderfully charismatic personality who does makeup tutorials. But watching her YouTube channel, she has this personality that emanates from the screen that I just thought would be perfect to play these three separate and distinct characters. She was on board for this crazy idea which is awesome considering she never even played the Mortal Kombat games. 
Now, where can I find Johnny Cage? I needed a fit, charismatic guy who was open to being shirtless the entire video. Again, my options were limited due to my very small budget, so I thought about maybe using my friend and constant collaborator, Corey Whipper, and when I asked him, he jumped at the chance to be in front of the camera instead of his usual role as director of photography behind it. With Noob and Smoke playing such small parts, Sean and I decided to fill these roles, and with Deborah on board, we have a full cast. Excellent. Now, costumes. The problem is, with this game specifically being Mortal Kombat 2, I needed costumes that fit this particular game. The Scorpion Sub-Zero Ninja costume wasn't too tough to find online. There are a myriad of possibilities from perfect replications that were very expensive to just simple, cheap Halloween costumes. The costume I picked had just the fabric mask, which is closer to the way that they look in the in-game footage, as opposed to their icons where Sub-Zero and Reptile and Scorpion have the graded masks. And so I really didn't want to, again, break the bank, so I went with the simpler costume, and it turned out pretty well, I think. I only wanted to buy one costume and then change the color in post, just like the color swaps of the sprites in the actual game itself. From my research on the games, I found that Ed Boon and the team used the yellow scorpion suit and then they swapped the colors to green, blue, and gray. But I wanted to consult with Corey, who is an expert colorist, which color, blue or yellow, would be easiest to swap in post-production. So he recommended the blue suit because it was a further departure from skin tones. So I bought the Sub-Zero costume and we went with that. For Johnny Cage, because he's shirtless and I didn't really want to have to buy the pants, we just filmed him from the waist up. To finish the ensemble, I bought some black Nike sweatbands from Dick's Sporting Goods and then we just used painter's tape to fill out the blue in the wristbands. For our ladies, the search for a game-specific costume was a perilous task to say the least. All the Katana, Jade, Melina costumes I came across were either not correct to Mortal Kombat 2, super slutty, or one costume that looked right but had this really shiny sheen material that wasn't really going to show well on camera. Pathetic. I searched for hours and hours on the internet for a Mortal Kombat 2 specific costume and I really couldn't find anything. And this shiny Melina costume that I found had pretty generic sizes which could run the risk of not fitting Deborah. So I settled on the idea of finding a local costume designer who could make the exact costume from the game and one that would fit Deborah's exact measurements. I commissioned local costume designer Christina Frost in September of 2020. Just like our Sub-Zero costume, instead of designing three separate ninja costumes in the different colors, I just had her make the katana costume and then I would swap the colors in post. So moving forward, on to production. That's a wrap on night one with Johnny Cage. We cannot wait to show you guys. We filmed most of this content in my production stu er, basement, um, with the only exception being Deborah, who filmed at her home in California. The first person I filmed with was none other than Johnny Cage, or my friend Corey. So we worked to create a nice looking lighting setup because after all, Johnny Cage is a Hollywood star. In contrast to that good lighting, my wife used some makeup to put bags under Johnny's eyes. I'm also going to give Corey a ton of credit. He's not the biggest Mortal Kombat fan, but he did a ton of research on Johnny Cage to really dig into this role and figure out the nuances of this egotistical, bigger-than-life personality. And what I mentioned before about the script being a work in progress, filming with Corey is a great example of that. He was the one who came up with the idea of saying sup losers as a greeting and really demeaning his peers as opposed to the more generic greeting that I had wrote. Sup losers. There are several other tweaks to the script and other ideas that Corey brought to the table like Johnny Cage watching himself flex his pec muscles instead of listening to the meeting. Go back and watch that if you missed that. But I believe that that type of collaboration really empowers the talent. And as a director, you want to make sure that they're comfortable in front of the camera and that you're allowing them to explore the character in ways that can help enhance the script. 
In addition to filming his lines, we of course had to tee up the head explosion for my VFX artist, Cody Rowan. Cody requested that we put tracking markers on Corey's neckline as well as shoot a plate or a shot of the background without the talent in the frame. I then moved on to film with Mitch who plays Scorpion and Sean who plays Reptile and Noob Cybot. For this one we filmed again, if you guessed it, in my basement, but I used different camera angles and lighting setups to make the spaces feel different. With Mitch, I underlit him because Scorpion is supposed to be an undead ninja specter, and so this lighting setup made him look a bit more sinister. Mitch also played around with the lines in the script quite a bit and turned Scorpion into a bit more of a troublemaker, a class clown, and he really leaned into the idea of Scorpion and Reptile being frat buddies or bros. He added the Your Mom piece when he was listing off the party attendees, which again, leans into the personification of this role. For Sean as Reptile, I lit him a bit more traditionally and I took my Titan tube and I mounted it on the wall behind him and I turned it green for kind of an industrial look. For Noob, he was really the easiest to caption as he only has one line for the entire script in his intro when he says hello, and then he just has reactions throughout the duration of the call. I hadn't put really any thought into how to light this character, but for his lighting, because he's such a silhouetted character, I turned all of the lights off and I just took the Titan tube and I moved it behind Sean's left shoulder and turned it cyan and this is the look we got. Now Deborah was the real challenge because again, she lives in California and I am here in Minnesota. What we did was we used her camera light setup that she uses to create her own content. She changed her fabric backdrops to change with each character and we also changed the angle of the camera so again, it seemed like each character was in charge of their own setup. Jade, I imagined more of the person in the Zoom call who doesn't really have a great idea how to frame themselves with the camera. Hi YouTube, filming with Deborah Jen right now. Then I directed her on the character's backstories with Katana being a princess and Melina having just this grotesque face underneath this mask and really gave her some ideas of how I thought that their personalities would play out within this film, and Deborah did the rest. I envisioned Jade and Katana kind of as mean girls, with Katana assuming the role more as Regina George and really looking down on Melina. However, I told Deborah to give Melina a little bit more of a trailer trash feel. Kid in the back row of the classroom, smoking cigarettes, doesn't care about the meeting or anything going on. Funny but not funny, we actually had to film Deborah's part twice. When we filmed the first time, her mask was loosely fitting and I didn't quite fully recognize from my vantage point on FaceTime just how incorrect it looked. After she sent me the footage, I really was convinced that I couldn't spend all this time and effort on this project and have this glaring issue from three characters just staring right at me. Once I showed Sean some of the raw footage from what we filmed, it's one of the first things that he mentioned was how her mask looked wrong. <clears throat> and at that point I knew we had to redo it. So I pinged Deborah, and she was on board to give another shot, try and fix the mask and go again. I'll give it another shot. Give him back another shot. I'm glad I didn't just roll with the mask as is from the first shoot. And that's for two reasons. The first one being that the mask didn't meet my standards and I'm glad that I fought for my vision to make sure that I got this right. And second is because the second time around that we filmed, Deborah was so much more comfortable with not only who each character was, but the actual lines themselves. Win, win, win. Thank you, Deborah, for dealing with me on two separate nights of filming. When filming with all of the talent, we started off by talking through the script and me giving notes on their character, certain beats or moments when their character would react in a certain way. And this is where the collaboration really came into play, as oftentimes the talent had their own suggestion for these moments. And after that walkthrough, I broke down the script into parts and then I read the script while the talent reacted to what was happening in front of them. Hey everyone, can you- Wait, why does Melina have to be here? She never contributes anything. Yeah, for my completely unbiased standpoint, Melina is by far the least played character in the entire 
This certainly added some flavor with me playing five or six characters all talking to each other at the same time. <laughs> it also left my voice strained at the end of each night. <laughs> now I filmed my part as Sub-Zero last. This allowed me as largely the central voice of the video to play off all the script tweaks as we filmed with various talent. For Sub-Zero's lighting, you can actually see here I did a more of a top-down light. I had a little kicker light over here, and then I used my Astro Titan tube and I set it to blue, and I just kind of had it be a nice side light here to kind of add some character to the scene. With Smoke, all I did was use the Titan tube overhead on a C-stand, set to daylight balance, and then I had a smoke machine, and I just had the smoke machine going off to kind of create that smoky effect. With the Sub-Zero and smoke segments captured, I was finally ready to move into post-production. All right, y'all, that's a wrap on production. I just wrapped up the last shot as smoke. So thus concludes the production. Yes, that is a wrap on all of our talent, all of our people in this production. So now it's all in post. I've already been editing the video for quite a long time, but now I finally have all the pieces after I refilmed with Deborah and I captured this little nugget with smoke. But oh, I'm so glad to be done with production. Woo! Almost done. And when I got to post, I thought I was near the finish line, but boy, was I wrong. This was one of the most intense projects I have ever worked on as an editor. You will die, mortal. Chocolate, marshmallow, Snickers. Oh my gosh, it's so good.